focused output. Another way to draw attention of the learners to, to a certain form is to focus on the output of the learners and to bring about um, a way in which the learners actually use the targeted form in, their, uh, in the production of their language. We have seen since 1990s um, that there has been a lot of research on this kind of um, focus on output, uh, focus on form in the output by the learners. But this type of research has mainly been descriptive in nature, that is, describing the process by which the learners actually use the uh, form or the efficacy of certain forms. However, later on, we see that now the research has actually moved on to focus on, uh, on the efficiency of the whole process. That is, what are the short-term and long-term uh, effects of the use of focus on uh, form-focused output. If we are to take an example of what type of activities can be used for form-focused output, let us take dictogloss. Now, what is a dictogloss? Dictogloss is a procedure by which uh, within which the teacher actually uh, puts the learners in groups and she reads out a dense text. A dense text would mean a text which is slightly more difficult than the ability of the learners. So the teacher might read the text once or she can read the text twice depending on the density of the text and the students in groups take notes. Once they have taken notes, they are asked to reconstruct the text. So, because they are, um, uh, they do that immediately and because it is still in their working memory, they use several of the items that they have just read to reconstruct the text. So, um, our research by Koval and Swain shows that dictoclass is an effective method that facilitates the, the attention of the learners on the form. And they argue that this, uh, this arises from, the, uh, from learner collaboration. That is, if you would remember, we talked about it in the sociocultural theory of, lang of learning also. That when the learners collaborate with each other, they co-construct knowledge. So if four learners are sitting together, some of them might remember some parts, the other would remember some linguist, other linguistic items, another one might think of the vocabulary or a structure. So together they help each other to co-construct uh, the text again. Now, Swain argues that students actually, uh, they hardly ever focus on the form uh, or the target form that the teacher presents. So, they are less interested and they are, or they are least interested on the targeted form. Rather, they pay attention to their own needs. What would this mean? This would mean that if the teacher had just focused, explained something or um, for instance, if through in input enhancement presented something, the learners might not pay attention to it. But when they are forced to use those items, then they have to pay attention because they knew, they know that they have this need to use certain structures or words to complete the task. So text reconstruction has been seen by research as an effective procedure to get the learner focus, uh, learners to focus on linguistic items. Now text reconstruction um, uh, also has been researched to, to produce what we call LRE, that is language related episodes more than other uh, ways of doing that. That is, the learners were more engaged in the using of the language 
or the targeted structure than other activities. Having said that, dictogloss is not the only way in which the learners can be made to reconstruct a task. There are other ways. Um, sometimes um, this task is given individually. The, learn the teacher might uh, give a short uh, paragraphs or short written texts uh, to individual learners and then um, after taking them away um, after the learners have read them the teacher might ask them to write a summary of the different parts they have read this is called a recall summary and this has also been seen to be um, very effective in uh, in sort of pushing the learners to pay attention to the form of the language and to use it.